Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, brought to you by the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And today, we are going to be looking at uh, each game from the night before. I'm going to start doing this, just reviewing the night games and uh, looking at where teams are going, how teams are doing, um, where I pre- where I project them to be going in the future. Um, just things like that. Lots of fun. You tell We can talk about it in the comment section. Uh, if I posted this on Facebook, let me know. We'll talk about it down there on where we think that the teams can improve or you think they can improve and say whatever you want about your favorite team. It's going to be frolic. Much frolic will be had. That's for sure. Talking about much frolic, NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. Three to five Eastern uh, weekdays. You can uh, you can join there. We do predictions and we talk about the games like we do right now. We just talk about trades or whatever rumors that might be going on and all the goings on in the NHL. It's a lot of fun. It's completely interactive. So if you come on and say, I think you're cra- what you said about this is nonsense or whatever, then do so. I'm fine. I, I'm a big boy. I can handle it. You can, Or you can come on and cheer on your team. You can do whatever you like. It's uh, it's a fun place to talk about hockey. Hockey is the finest game in the land, don't you know? All right, let's take a look at last night's games, and we'll discuss some of the happenings. Okay, first one, Tampa Bay Lightning. These guys, I just I can't stand them. They have a they have a tendency to lose against teams that they should win a lot. Now that being said. Last night, they really did outplay Buffalo. The problem was, uh, really, as far as I'm concerned, was Elliott in net for Tampa Bay. Um, had He struggled in Philadelphia. Everybody in the land was interested to see how he would do. In, in He struggled in, in Tampa. And so far, not so good. It, he did not look good last night. Uh, the um, first period... Lucky goal. Again, I watch all the games, so I'm in and out of the games. I didn't see all, I don't see all of the goals, but um, what I did see, and I watched quite a bit of this, was Tampa Bay taking it to them. Um, One thing I noticed about Tampa Bay is uh, they haven't been driving to the net. They've been taking a lot of shots from the outside. Um, They're really missing guys like Coleman that way, you know? So, they, and they're adjusting to all the new young faces that they have in the lineup and new faces in general. Um, Drake Kajula looked really good last night for the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, and uh, Buffalo did take some possession time in the offensive zone here and there. They're, a, they're playing a big game. They're playing a big hockey game. Um, what I mean by that is they're using their physicality when they can. And you're, it's not going to be an easy out in Buffalo for this year by the looks of it. I like Granado a lot, and I uh, like the way they have this team playing. Once they add some serious skill, some better skill, they're going to be a much better team. But they'll win games like this. They just hang on, hang on. Um, oh, we can't. We have to talk about uh, talk about goaltenders. we got to talk about Craig Anderson. 40 years old, and he's just crushing it right now. Had a .972. I think he's over over nine by a long shot already. Um, He's the heartbeat of this team, for sure. Uh, Victor Olofsson has looked – his shot is really fantastic. We already knew that, but he's finding a lot of chemistry with uh, Asplund. And Asplund is getting better – Every year, um, I'm really impressed by that guy. I'm uh, pretty amazing. But Tampa Bay, for the most part, really did outplay them. It was kind of poor goaltending. I like to look at the way coaches uh, deploy their players. And Granado, I think, uh, very wisely is basically playing everybody no more than no less than 13 minutes. Occasional guys like Hayden. Or Bjork is down, getting down in minutes again. That's not good um, for him. Coming over from Boston, he has a really good chance to take a spot, and he's not really grabbing it. Because 
Asplin, Thompson, uh, Henestrosa, they're all playing with a sense of urgency. And as a coach, you would lo- you love that. That's the guys you want to play. You, one of the biggest things in hockey is having a sense of ur- urgency every game. That you are um, you don't take any night- nights off. That's what they call nights off. You could be playing not bad, but if you don't have a sense of urgency, getting to the pucks first. If you're going to lose at the end of the game, you want to be able to say, you know what, we we played with a sense of urgency and we gave it all we had. And Buffalo's doing that right now. Jeff Skinner is going back to the same Jeff Skinner, though, that we had seen before. Um, he's just a perimeter player now. I don't know what's going to happen with him. It's got to be very frustrating for a coach to have a $9 million player that's supposed to score. And he has also kind of been in the league long enough that he could be a leader for these young guys. And he's not doing what you need to do. He does not play with a sense of urgency. He is getting four shots on goal. I wouldn't, uh, he's getting lots of shots on goal actually for him. Like there's lots of times last year where he gets zero over and over and over again. Um, one of the most interesting stories was to see what Skinner would be. And look, he's only getting 13 minutes beaten out by Gergen Sims, who always plays with urgency. Cousins, Ocpozo's playing 18 minutes. He's looking better than he has ever since he was playing on the island beside Tavares. Um, Butcher, I actually haven't mind his game, but you know, as long as you take into consideration that he's going to fly up the ice, he's going to take chances. And it seems like um, Granado has just said, yeah, that's what I got. So go do it. Be yourself. Do what you're doing. But you're, with that being in mind, uh, I think he's playing with Hag, isn't he? Which is the perfect combination for him. Hag is the opposite. He's not a guy that likes to go into the offensive zone too much. Skill set does isn't good for that. Plays defensively, so it's a good combination. Tell me if I'm wrong about that. And Pissick putting up 20 minutes, and what I from what I watched last night, he's just playing a nice, steady game. Um, he he had that in Florida when for a while, and it sort of just seemed to go away. And then he lost his confidence. Went to Dallas, I believe. And they played him forward uh, defense, played him low in the lineup. Now he's getting a chance again, like almost like a second chance in his career. And I think he's taking a hold of it pretty well, playing really well. Pretty non, nondescript, uh, for, nondescript team that is just playing hard. Now with Tampa, on the other hand, I, I think they played well last night. They, they played well, uh, a good pose- possession game for sure. Like I said, uh, goaltending wasn't the greatest, but it's the, I, I hate to go over and over it again, but sense of urgency. Um, and what I mean by that for them is their sense of urgency is driving to the net. And they haven't had players that have been just taking the puck to the net. Maybe they don't have those players, but I think they do. they got Kalorin, they have Palat, they have Sorelli, Colton. These guys got to be driving the net, man. And uh, if they're not, Tampa Bay will lose to teams like Buffalo, which they did. Um, how is he deploying his – it's almost the same as usual. I thought Colton might have a little more minutes. Um, but for the most part, Tyler Radish was pretty nondescript last night. I didn't really notice him that much. He's kind of an up-and-down winger, just uh, figuring it out in the NHL. Um Hopefully he has better nights in the future. Next game. Capitals versus Senators. And what a crazy game this is. And I think Washington's going to win a lot of games this this uh, this way in high-scoring games. Um, I mentioned in, uh, first of all, I'm not a Samsonov guy. And, uh, I mean, it's not that he didn't play well last night from what I heard, from what I saw. It's the de- a lot of defensive breakdowns. Like, it, it seemed obvious to me that they were just saying, we can out-offense this team, so we're going to do it. And they left, kind of left Samsonov high and dry several times. And then there was other times when Samsonov was stopping great, was making great saves. And that's kind of what he, how he is. It's like sometimes he looks like he's going to take on the world, and other times he'll let a soft one in and stuff like that. Consistency has been his problem for a long time. 
Uh, TJ Oshi, Oshi, nice to see him get going last night. And awesome to see McMichael last night. He had a great game. Uh, got an opportunity to play on the second line because who is the injuries again? Um, Dow Chalowski. Who, who is supposed to be in that spot? It's Backstrom, and there was another injury. I don't know why they don't have it here. But he got an opportunity to play, and uh, he looked really well. I got to say, Nick Jensen's looked the best that he has in his career. However, last night, the whole team defense was not, as, was not really existent. I kind of think that they just figured they were going to outscore him, and they played uh, a very risky game. And it worked because you're going you're gonna to outscore Ottawa quite often playing a risky game. They don't have the greatest defense in the world yet. Uh, they're just growing. I thought Ottawa had a lot of fight back, a lot of pushback, and that's the way they are. They're, they're going to be a team, once they gel and get a little more, uh, a little more skill and veteran leadership in their lineup, going to be super strong, especially in the playoffs, I think. Um, I was really, um, un I think I find it unfortunate that Sprong is getting only seven minutes again. Um, that's not a good sign. He has struggled to for cons with consistency, especially day-to-game to -game -to -game intensity. And getting seven minutes would tell me that he wasn't, uh, Laviolette wasn't seeing that from him last night. And uh, you don't want to see him going down that path again because he'll be out of the lineup really quick. He was, he's had the same, he had, when he got drafted by Pittsburgh, um, he, he didn't get much of a chance there, as people say. Then he went to Anaheim, and it's been the same issue. It's been intensity and day, game to game intensity, and it hasn't worked out for him. La, Lapierre got an opportunity to play last night um, and uh, looked okay. They only gave him seven minutes. He's just a young guy. He looks like a guy that's going to be a good two-way guy, though. Good two, good two-way center. Had a terrible injury in junior, which knocked down his draft ranking. But before he did, they were pre he was getting compared to guys like Bergeron. Um, pretty cool. So if he can even be like a Dan O or something like that, strong two-way center would be awesome. Um, Wilson was being Wilson last night, and I love Wilson. I love Wilson. He was interacting with everybody. He doesn't. He doesn't back down at all. He 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 engages it. He loves it. He loves physical play. You want to push him around. He's willing to push back ten times ten times over. Um, probably had a bad penalty. You're gonna get that with Wilson. But I just love him. It's fantastic. Uh, for for Ottawa, it, I. This is a team that is really just figuring out how they're going to play besides being extremely difficult to play against. And they are difficult to play against. There's no doubt about that. You go into Ottawa, everybody knows you're, they're not backing down from anybody. Um, one thing i got to say is Tim Stutzla, uh, he, I, I don't know if it's because he's just physically still growing into his body. He's got wonderful skill. He's a he's, he's beautiful skater on the ice. But he's playing. He plays way too perimeter right now. And it's, I had a, I had him in possibly in the fifty to sixty point range. But if from what I saw last night, if he does that, he probably won't reach that level, which is a little unfortunate. Um, but he's still super young, super skilled, and you can say that about a, you know a lot of these guys on the team that are figuring out what they're going to be in the NHL, like Formington, for instance, up and down winger. Um, he looks like he can pot a couple off the fly on the fly and stuff like that, but more than likely is going to be in when this team is really good is going to be more of a fourth line guy, but all of them, I just love the pushback that they, you have from everybody on the team. They don't back down from anybody and it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. Uh, here's the thing. Mete, I remember when he was traded by Montreal People were saying, okay, he's going to be a, their top four guy. And I was like, I don't know, man. I know his analytics look good, but he gets overmatched in the defensive zone quite a bit. And he only played 10 minutes, was a minus two. Um, from what I saw, 
it wasn't spectacular. He's got a lot of growing to do, and he's kind of in the age where growing should be already almost completed. So at this point, I would say that when they get more defensemen, he may get pushed out again here in Ottawa. Uh, Zub, I love. I was saying it last year. Zub is their best defenseman. Um, I still think he's their best defenseman. Don't get me wrong. I love Shabbat too. But I like Zub, Zub's overall two-way game better than I do Shabbat's. Um, I love Shabbat's offense. And if he had a ton of, uh, a lot more uh, um, players that to play with, that he could pass the puck to and stuff. I think he'll bring up some really good points. Kind of like what we were um, in Washington, guy like John Carlson, somebody like that. And I didn't talk about Ferhavy. Ferhavy, oh my gosh. Or for is that is that how you say it? Ferhavy. 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 That's it. Heard it last night. Um, I, I was mentioning it last night. I was like, why, or last year. I was wondering why they kept on sending him down because when he was up, he looked really good. And I think he's going to start grabbing minutes from other players the way he's playing. Uh, as far as goaltending, and that was a big thing too. That was another reason why they could go full more offense. Forsberg just isn't an NHL goaltender. He's just not. And Gustafson took over, and fair, and fair uh, he didn't really fare all that much better. So, But when you're playing against a big, strong offensive team like the Washington Capitals and you can't keep up to it, goaltenders are probably not going to have the greatest night. <laughs> so, Next game. Okay. I don't know why it's taking so long. Panthers versus Coyotes. And I went to go pick up my son last night. I had uh, the Panthers to win by two, and they were up 4-1. And I was like, okay, we're good. I went to go pick up my son. Come back. It's 4-3. I didn't even see what happened. But they in the first period, Arizona only had one shot on goal, and they scored on it. <laughs> the only goal. Clayton Keller from Schmaltz. Um, Joe Thornton. Old man Thornton, by, with the beard and everything. I was sitting there. My wife doesn't watch hockey, but she saw him. She was like, who's that 72-year-old out there? And I was like, yeah, that's true Thornton. That's old man Thornton we call him. Uh, 42 years old. Pots a goal last night, though. Pretty cool. But Trano pots one. Uh, we'll see what his minutes are like. They haven't been playing him all that much. If I was a team out there, he's a guy I kind of ident I would identify to try to bring on my team for possibly cheap as Florida has got a lot of depth and uh, they could have some young guys that could take his spot. I like him. I think he's a good, I think he's, you know, good 20, 25 goal score gives it every night. Doesn't complain. Low maintenance. I like the guy. Um, Ekblad pots one. Huberto, of course, lighten it up. Everything's going good. Huberto pots another one. Oh, that was, I believe on the one on the, uh, uh, two on two on O, they had a two on O, um, and uh, it was a nice, beautiful little passing play. Then finally, I I gotta go. I I didn't even have a chance to see what happened here, but Liam O'Brien scores from Fisher and Strowman, and Phil Kessel finally pots one. The Doughboy is <laughs> to call him. Man, that guy is a freak of nature. He does. Apparently, I've heard from several uh, players that he played with that he doesn't hardly work out at all. He fishes all summer, and he still, you know, was a 30-40 goal scorer. Pretty unbelievable. Finally, Duclair potted, potted one, pots one in the empty net to save me. I don't know about you guys, but that was they made it uh, interesting for sure. As far as Arizona is concerned, there was I, I think there was aspects of their game last night that I was watching, even when they were outscored, that you saw a team that was figuring out some defense. Uh, which will help, which was good because this team is going to be an absolute like five wins. Are they going to get five wins this year? Uh, that would lie with that's almost the over and under for Arizona right now is five wins. Uh, overall, the guys that stood out last night for Arizona, I thought Larson played well, he always does. Um, I love to see Lad, you know, coming back from those terrible injuries he had. 
and playing. He's probably just happy to be on the ice right now, which is good for a team like that because they're going to um, they're going to need some positive energy as they go through here. Louis Erickson, come on, man. I'm just just retired, dude. Seriously. Like, well, I guess at the end of it, this will be I think this is the last year of his contract. I, I, I don't think there's a softer player in the NHL, besides maybe Skinner. Um, defensively, Gosh Despier is just doesn't – if you saw Gosh Despier and you didn't know it, you would think he was a rookie that did never play defense, that is like figuring out the defense in the NHL, and he's not. He's like 27, 28, and he just doesn't do anything in the defensive zone. It's, it's hard to watch. Connor Timmons got injured last night. Um, that's another guy gone from a, from a defense that doesn't really have much at all. This team is totally on rebuild mode. And then they lost Carter Hutton, who actually was playing well to start the game. Um, but they lost him to, to a lower body injury, they say. And uh, Vamelka, it just isn't an NHL goaltender at all. They're doing this on purpose. They're tanking. And I guess in that way, you just got to watch it. Watch the games and and be and know that maybe four or five years down the road, possibly you're going to get a really good player in this next year's draft, no matter what. And that one after that, if you can get top two, whoo, talking some serious Bedard and uh, the Russian kid um, Malkoff or something, amazing, amazing players. That would be so good for Arizona. They deserve some good talent there to watch. The games at um, as far as Florida, I thought they were I, from what I've seen about teams play in Arizona. They play really cautious to start out with. They just all about puck management. They don't want to be as long as they don't give odd man rushes and uh, to Arizona. Any team should win. It's just don't want to make those bonehead plays, and you could kind of tell the first period that that's what they were doing. Uh, and then they started to open up a bit. And apparently in the third, they did too much because they came back and scored too. But um, anyways, they got the win. I, I think if they really wanted to put their mind to it, they could have absolutely blown them out of the water. When are they going to start giving Owen Tippett more ice time, man? I, I At 11 minutes, I guess it's just hard to find a spot in the in, on the roster right now with Reinhardt there playing on the wing. Um, Duclair, they got him playing on the top line. I like the way they're deploying Duclair, uh, way, the way Q is deploying Duclair. They're, he's playing him five on five on the top uh, line with a you know stud of a defensive center like Mar- Barkov because he's not great defensively. But Barkov can, can uh, make up for that. In the offensive zone, though, he does everything. It, I, he, I think he does everything right. Um, and uh, it's a good way to deploy him. Don't put him on uh, power play or, or shorthanded. Um, give him like limited minutes at 13 minutes. I, it's, it's a great way to deploy an offensive guy who doesn't really play well defensively. Overall, I thought it was just a great game um, by, by Florida, but it could have been a lot better. I just think that they were being very cautious. That's my f- – oh, wait. Oh, yeah, Anton Lundell was injured last night and uh or scratched or injured i believe he's injured so um that sucks for a young guy like that he's looked fantastic in his time there and then of course spencer knight as well um had those two goals i'd like to go back and see what those two goals are but i i just love it don't isn't it fun watching young guys like that play goal like when you see like this ob- obvious superstar and you're watching them grow into being that, it's uh, to me it's just fun. Love it. Play Spencer Knight a lot. Although the way Bob Roski has been playing, they probably won't be. Um, the Flames. Now I had this one too. The Flames are just playing a physical brand of hockey, the Sutter style, man, and they are doing it at a hundred miles an hour, um, super fast. They got their legs moving all the time. Um, moving the puck quick, moving the uh, using the puck for speed. That's what Sutter always says. Um, even if you're not a fast skater, the puck moves way faster than the person. So get the puck moving fast up the ice as quickly as you possibly can. I think any team does that. Uh, 
coach would like that. But Sutter gets like, it's almost like a rugby style system that they play. And they just move the puck up super fast that way. Getting into the corners, basically with Sutter, it's pretty simple. If you're not going to fight in the corners, you're not going to play. He doesn't care who you are, what your name is, how much money you make. If you don't fight in the corners, you are not going to play. Fortunately for him, he's got a lot of guys that do that, like Andrew Mangiopani, who scored last night. Man, that was I love watching Mangi- Mangiopani play. He is a hockey player's hockey player, that guy. And uh, so far, Blake Coleman got another one last night. That five point whatever million is working out pretty well. I was a little unsure. I thought this wasn't going to be the right fit for him. I thought they were, should look for some more offensive guys. So far, I am way wrong. Coleman is looking absolutely excellent on that line, on that team. Um, and on the other side of things, the New York Rangers, I hope this woke you up because that's the kind of play game you got to play. They got a lot of young talent there. Uh, I would be showing tape for that Calgary game over and over again, saying, see what they did here, how they physically got it in front of you first, then grab the puck, not reach for the puck and then hope you get it. Um, and that's what, that's what uh, Sutter wants. He goes, you go up and take the man and then try to take the puck and don't get the puck. I'll, I'll forgive you for that. I mean, that, but take the man first, then the puck. And if you're not doing it, you will not play for, uh, and who did he scratch, by the way? May not tell me everything about that, but uh, Zadaroff and, and, and Michael Stone. Okay, Zadaroff, you notice he's getting scratched a lot. And I, I predicted that, that would happen when he went over to Calgary. I had arguments with Calgary Flames fans because analytically he looked good defensively in Chicago. But um, he's got a big reach and he can use that well. Um, I think the analytics are kind of a fluke, to tell you the honest truth. Yes, he will give you a big hit in the open ice. But the problem with him, for a guy that's that big, he doesn't take the body first quite often. He reaches a lot. Um, he's slow. So if he doesn't get there, he um, puts himself out of position. He hasn't figured out how to um, leave himself uh, in position with the skating. You can be a slower defenseman, but know your limits. That's what I'm trying to say. And Zadaroff never hasn't really figured out how to uh, know his limits. Why were his analytics so good last year? I really don't know, to tell you the honest truth. I Sometimes things are just kind of freaky. <laughs> and that's kind of the way it was there. I didn't watch a lot of this game because it was a blowout. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be on the, on the next day while they're looking at the tape. They're going to be showing all the right things that Calgary did and what this team needs to do to be more like that. Shesterkin, did he have a great game? Tell me, though. I don't know. Uh, it, it seems to be that what the Rangers have done so far, they've been they've been outplayed and, and, and got some scoring at good times and all of that because they have offensive players, like the, in Ottawa, for instance, that they came back and won 3-2. But they didn't really look great. And their goaltender, I think Gorgiev is in there. Their goaltending has basically kept them in games. Shesterkin may not have been totally on the top of his game last night. And if that's the case, the way the Rangers play, they're going to lose a lot of games like that. Not to mention, you can't rely on your goaltender over and over and over in the NHL. You're not going to be much more than a 500 team. Uh, next, the Toronto Maple Leafs. And... Versus the Carolina Hurricanes and Carolina just just takes teams apart. There is no better prepared team for the opposition than the Carolina Hurricanes right now. Brendan Moore got the Adams last year. I really thought it should have went to Q, but I'm not upset about it because he's amazing, and he has his team prepared. They they know exactly what they need to do against every opposition that they play against, and Toronto. They, to- they, they picked them apart. They completely picked them apart in that game. Uh, what did they need to do? They Toronto has like a couple guys that you got to take out. They put their best players on those guys and uh, made sure they weren't in the defensive zone very much. You can take a, you can take a couple risks to get the puck out against Toronto. 
they uh, they don't seem to knock down passes very well, and they don't have all that much depth. So that's that's pretty much what they did. Sebastian Ajo is a beast. Bear, the Oilers trading bear. We said it, Peyton the Radio and I said it on my live broadcast. They're going to regret that, and I still believe that they will. Um, but and Svechnikov, this is the year, man. This is the year for Svechnikov. I got him in my I got him in my fantasy. I probably took him higher than most people would have, but I loved him. I wanted to make sure nobody took this guy, and he's smashing it in uh, Carolina. It looks like he's got confidence like crazy. Last year, it looked like Brendan Moore was just making sure he, he was t- uh, understood the defensive part of the game, and he's an underrated two-way guy. As far as Toronto and their lineup, Kerfoot again, one shot on goal. Like He doesn't do much of anything. I don't understand for the life of me why they let McCann go and kept Kerfoot. I'll never know. I don't know why what the love affair with Kerfoot is. He's just a very vanilla player as far as I'm concerned. And um, Richie was banging bodies last night. Oh, he only had one hit. Oh, I guess he wasn't banging bodies last night. <laughs> what game was I watching? Um, it, this team just has no depth. It has no depth. A- Engvall, they have him on the power play. He looks lost on the power play out there. But who are you, Who else are you going to put out there? Um, Kampf, finally, he's getting down to about 11 minutes. He's a fourth-line center. He's a fourth-line center. They don't really have a third-line center on their team. Um, and... I don't know. I predicted that they missed the playoffs this year. and Well, it's early, but it's looking like things are going that direction. Sandine, uh, he looks good. It's just really difficult to look good as a young player playing with a, 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 a team, on a team with a lack of depth um, that doesn't really have players that can play a role. I think that's the biggest thing with Toronto. They don't really have players that can play – all the roles you need to play in the NHL. Also, they are just gelling, so we'll give them that. we got to give them a little bit of time. There is a lot of uh, movement in the offseason, bringing in bargain basement guys like Bunting and uh, Nick Ritchie. Hyman, which looks... Ugh, losing Hyman was devastating for this team. It's pretty obvious. As far as uh, uh, Carolina... They, it's a normal thing. They have guys that play specific roles. Kokaniemi, the big hot, uh, light is on him quite a bit. And they're playing him perfectly. 12 to 14 minutes a night, getting them used to the system. And uh, he plays a good two-way game. Uh, playing him on the wing, I like that. Get him used to playing what Carolina's system is. Build up his confidence, and I think next year, or maybe even later this year, you'll start to see him play more minutes because he's very responsible defensively. And that's the other thing about Carolina. There isn't a player that's not. Nietzsche, Teravainen, Kokaniemi, Martinuk, Svechnikov learned that last year, Nita Ryder. All of these guys are very responsible defensively. This team is just an absolute beast of a team. Um, D'Angelo, 17 minutes, told you. Who was talking about there? Uh, I was talking to people out there. They were saying, oh, he'll get 10 minutes a night. He's not good enough defensively. I was like, hogwash. He's going to play plenty. And he did. And he's doing really well. 17 minutes a night. Um, but overall, this defense just gets better and better as they're. And think about this. There's, all, uh, there's no Hamilton. So D'Angelo came in. They brought in Cole. Um, they brought in Bear. Like a lot of this defense is all new, and it's like they've been playing together forever. Amazing coaching there. And then Anderson, uh, I said, as long as he's not injured, he's going to be great for that team, and he sure is. If Nedeljkovic can pull the numbers he did last year for Carolina, Anderson will pull out some pretty darn good numbers. Interesting game to watch. I had Carolina all the way. Um, until Toronto figures things out, maybe gets, I don't know what they're going to do. Toronto, my gosh. I would not want to be a player on that team right now in Toronto. Uh, Blue Jackets also had the Blue Jackets to win this game. Um, I also had it under five and a half. What the heck? There we go. Um, the Stars look old. I've mentioned this in my live broadcasts. 
Uh, they look like an old team. They look like a team that just doesn't have jump. And uh, Columbus, I figured, was going to figure things out and be a strong, not a bad team in the second half. They had a whole lot of new uh, players, and it was going to take a bit. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I think they made surprise in the second half. Bjorkstrand's having the time of his life, man. Nine points already uh, this year, and when I see him out there, he looks happier than I've ever seen him. In fact, on the ice, I see a lot of players look happy. Um, and you would say, well, okay, it was Tortorella or whatever the case may be. Tortorella, yeah, he I, I, he uh, is pretty serious, and maybe that was wearing on the players for sure. He's a very serious coach. Uh, he he takes expects a lot, and he gets everything he can out of every player he can. Seems to wear on players over time, but it's also the movement of Dubois and Panarin and all that drama that was going on. It's all gone, and they look really happy to be playing with each other. Alexander Tessier, okay, how many minutes did he give him there? I'll find out when we look at the Dallas stuff. But as far as Dallas is concerned, um, it's looking a little scary. It's looking a little scary. They look like they're kind of lost a little bit. It looks like they're behind to play a lot. Um, besides a few guys like Raffle, um, even Pavelski. And this is what we kind of wondered. Like every year it gets tougher when you get up to those late 30s. Is this the year? that he falls down and it falls over because that would um, Dallas, if uh, Pavelski isn't going at the top of his game, the way he was last year, it could be a struggle this year. And it's looking like it is a struggle this year. They even had Klingberg back. He played 20 minutes last night. Um, Suter does not look good. I'm sorry. He just does not look good out there. He looks old. And I, I say it, their old players are looking old you got Sagan coming back from injury uh, he, he doesn't look too bad uh, Radulov too very old uh, a little bit concerning no doubt about it I don't understand the whole Holtby thing though can somebody tell me what's going on with why they brought in Holtby I don't get it why don't they have Ode o o um, o Oatmeyer, uh playing Ottinger sorry Ottinger Playing. He's playing in the minors. I don't know. He was their best goaltender last year, wasn't he? Tell me what you guys think in the comment section. Um, Lion had six six shots. They're just they got a complete effort from everybody last night, um, and that's what this team is going to have to do. They're going to have to have a total effort. It's a total team effort and uh, a good energy every game that they play. And when they do, they will surprise teams like they did last last night. Jake Bean. Love watching him play all those minutes. Putting it uh, was stuck in the bottom in Carolina in the depth chart. Came here and has looked pretty darn good. So has Peak. Peak has looked. He's learned how to play within his limitations. He used to kind of do too much for what he has as a skill set, but I think he looked. He's looking really good and he's getting the minutes to show it. Starting to get 17 minutes a night um, and uh, bringing it in a way that he is going to be a good shutdown, uh, play it simple type of defenseman. If he can play like that, I think he'll do really well. And he skates not bad for a guy his size. Whereas Lickens, of course, is he, he said this year he was going to have his best year. In fact, he even said he's going to win the Vesna. I don't know. That might be a little bit much to ask, but uh, I don't, I, that's why I had Columbus Blue Jackets to win. I just think Dallas looks tired and old for some reason. Uh, St. Louis Blues versus the Kings. And the Kings gave out, I, I watched quite a bit of this, and uh, the Kings gave out a pretty good effort last night. Is my computer going to allow me to watch this? Here we are, yes, okay. Ah, one day. There we go. Uh, Kings put out a good effort, but when you lose Dowdy to injury, and then they also lost another defenseman last night, and I'll find out who it is here. Um, 
to injury as well. It was Walker. And they were down to five guys. Uh, when I saw that happen, I instantly put out uh, third per- that St. Louis would win in the third period, and they did. And Tarasenko, what's going to happen here now in St. Louis with Tarasenko? Everybody's kind of like, let's just forget the old I want to be traded thing ever happened and hope he's happy and, you know, stuff like that. But I guess even if they do still want to trade him, if he still has hurt feelings for whatever happened there with his injuries with the St. Louis Blues, at the very least, you're going to get something back for him right now. But St. Louis is playing better than I thought they were going to play. They are... uh, playing with tons of energy. I thought with their new players, they might struggle early. No, five wins in a row. By the way, three teams winning five wins in a row. I didn't even mention Carolina as well. Or three or four teams, that's the first time in NHL history that that has ever happened. Um, They have had easier competition so far, St. Louis. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do when they get up to uh, some pretty, so a lot of tough competition, but so far so good. Um, I thought Krug is totally ruining my, my perception of him. He is playing the best I have seen him in a very long time, and so is Falk. Pareko has been more of a defensive defenseman guy. I think that's what he is now. I don't think you're going to see all that much offense from uh, Pareko. I thought that Scandello, Bertuzzo, Tuzo, and Wallman that the defense wasn't going to be able to do her here for uh, St. Louis, but so far you're throwing it in my face. Uh, No doubt about it. They are playing top-notch. Neil had him up on the top line. Now they got him up on the top line. He's got a great shot. He just, he's not very well conditioned and that's his, uh, his own. He, He said that himself when he was in Calgary, he went, I think he took a summer off from golf. I guess he golfs a lot and got himself into the top physical uh, condition he could get at his age. A little too, uh, not little too little, a uh, little too late, but he gets, he's getting 13 minutes now and he looks pretty good for the time that he's out there. But you can't play him much more than that because he pooches out over a season. Watch, watch. Neil, the second half will probably be a scratch. You get the most out of him early. He's a guy that could have been a regular 30-goal scorer his whole career if he would have just kept himself in much better condition than he did. Um, Robert Thomas, ooh, is that a sigh of relief? Robert Thomas is looking good out there with uh, Tarasenko and who is the other guy on that line? Is it Cairo? Tell me who the other guy in the line is. is are they playing him between the two kids? Anyways, he's playing with... Uh, that's going to bug me. It's not clicking in my head. I think it might be. Anyways, uh, he's it's really given him a lot of confidence to play with Tarasenko, obviously. He's playing with confidence this year. Last year was a bad year for him. But he's bringing it now. So fun games to watch. Tell me what you think about my little rundown of each team and uh, what your team is doing and how great it is for, say, if you're a St. Louis fan, to have five games in a row. Thought I'd try this out. Tell me if you like this type of uh, tell me if you'd like me to do this in the future. I'm having fun doing it. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Okay, bye.